What's going on guys? So, behind me, or to the left of me, or whatever it may be, we have this 05 Silverado 1500 with the big 5.3 in it. And customer complaint is that there is a noise coming from the right front wheel, thinks it may be a wheel bearing. Now, I took it for a test drive quick just to see what it was doing. Didn't even make it out of the parking lot, decided it was unsafe to go any further. Did a little bit of poking around. We've got low speed ABS activation, which is very common with a wheel bearing failure, being that the wheel speed sensor is actually built into the wheel bearing. So with a wheel bearing fa failure, it actually causes the ABS to trigger because it thinks that there is a wheel cylinder, not a wheel cylinder, a wheel sensor dropping out or a wheel slipping or something of that nature. So we're getting low speed activation. We're getting an extreme noise from the passenger side of the vehicle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you guys underneath the vehicle now and show you exactly what it is that I found. All right, so here is the passenger side wheel right here. And everything looks somewhat normal. And like you can see right there, that is where the ABS sensor goes into the wheel bearing. Now, what I want you guys to see, and hopefully you can see it, let me see if I can get some light on it, is right there where the axle meets the wheel hub. Let's see if we can get a little bit better of a view on that. I'm sure you can hear it, but you might not be able to see it on camera. Let's see if we come up to this side. Maybe that'll help. But anywho, the wheel bearing is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Um, pretty much completely broken. Surprisingly, it hung on. So we're gonna get to replacing this wheel bearing. Really no further troubleshooting needed because there's so much play in it. Everything else looks good, ball joints look good. All right guys, so like I was saying before, this obviously doesn't need any more diagnosis than the fact that we can move the wheel pretty much out of the hub. So we're just gonna replace the hub bearing. We're gonna get in here and we're gonna pull this all this apart. We'll show you how to do it. I'll get you zoomed in so you can see it. I'll get it lit a little bit better so that you can see it. But overall, this is a pretty easy job that you can do with hand tools. The only exception is gonna be the 35 millimeter nut for the axle that's right here that can be kind of difficult to take off sometimes, but we're gonna grab the tools, get all that stuff done. I'll get you guys lit up better so you can see and we'll zoom it in. All right guys, so we're gonna start taking the caliper off. Pretty simple stuff. There's a 19 millimeter here, 19 millimeter here. We'll get those cracked loose. They can be a little tight. Actually, they can be a lot tight. <clears throat> For these jobs, for the most part, I just use hand tools. There's really not a huge sense of or sense of breaking out all the power tools. The only thing we'll use an impact for is the uh, the big hub nut. So not really a not really a crazy job where you need a whole ton of tools. I'll pull the caliper off, and the Chevys are nice because you can set the caliper right on top of the control arm there. You don't have to tie it up with anything. Pull the brake pads out. And then we gotta get the caliper bracket off so we can pull the rotor. There's more bolts back here. These are smaller, which is kind of odd. I think they're 17s or 18s. Yeah, they're 18s. All right, let's find us an 18 millimeter. 17. 18. Oh god, those are tight. We might want to use the impact for those. Alright, we can't find our socket, so... We're just going to use good old fashioned brute force. One. 
into and like I said this is definitely something that you guys could do in the comforts of your own driveway or wherever you might be really doesn't require any specialty tools like I said other than that 35 millimeter for the for the axle nut and these are pretty common in the Northeast and you guys that live in the Northeast know that we have a lot of crazy salt and grime and everything else that goes on our stuff so it can get pretty crusty it can be pretty hard on bearings I don't know if you guys can see how bad that is but it's pretty bad so now what we've got let's see if we can get you guys a little bit better angle here there we go All right, so what we got to do is we got to get this cover off right here. This cover underneath it has the 35 millimeter nut that we're going to have to remove first. So I'm going to get this guy off of here and hopefully if we can find our hammer. Be able to pop this cover off quick. Hold on guys, someone had to... Alright, so we almost got that off. We had to go help Mr. Rudnick get his Civic on the, uh, on the trailer. So let's finish getting this cap off of here. And then our 35 millimeter nut is so weird. Everybody's either 32 or 36, and GM happens to be 35. All right. So now that we got that guy off, get this big washer out. I like to just give this a little bit of a tippy tap. Good. To make sure that we're not stuck. These splines you guys can see it the splines in this bearing right here will get stuck and the axle shaft will actually get stuck in the bearing just due to rust and whatever but this one moves pretty freely so we're good now what we're gonna do is on the back side of this bearing I'll flip you guys around so you can see it a little bit better but there are three 15 millimeter bolts we're gonna disconnect this wire up here for the ABS sensor the three bolts and then hopefully with a little bit of persuasion, this bearing will come right out. I'll show you guys the new one. So let me flip you guys around so you can see the back side of this. All right, guys, so I lied. We're not going to use hand tools on this one. These are a little tight, a little rusty. So we're going to get in here with the gun, hopefully, or maybe not. Might need to use a little swivel action here. Let's see if we can grab one of those. Yeah, there we go. Knew I had that puppy somewhere.
All right, so the top one's a little awkward. You can't really get any kind of a um, socket on there. You actually have a pretty hard time getting anything because you hit this, this bolt right here. So doing it by hand isn't too, too bad. Oh, sorry. My hand was in the way on that one. Yeah, we do these jobs quite often and quite frequently. And most of the time when you get low speed activation of your ABS, like I was saying before, it's you know usually seen when you come into a stop sign and you hit the brakes <clears throat> and you get that pulsating like you just hit some ice. And nine times out of 10 with these Chevys, it's uh, it's not ice. It's the fact that you've got a wheel bearing that could be failing or there's some extra rust. Sorry for the no light guys, I'm just trying to unclip this harness. There's a little bit of rust that gets into the ABS sensor, the wheel speed sensor, and you end up with low speed ABS activation, which at times can be a little unnerving, especially when you're trying to stop quick or you got something that you were trying to do. I know people that have run into their own garage doors, have almost hit people in crosswalks. It's a pretty severe issue with these things. So replacing the wheel bearing is actually the logical way to uh, fix this issue. You can replace just the sensor. You can purchase just the sensor. But the problem with that is actually getting the sensor out of this bearing. And I'll show you guys what I mean as soon as I get this bearing out. I'll show you how badly these things rot into the into the actual uh, hub assembly here. There we go. All right. Now, we are going to give this a little crystal blue persuasion. Let's see what happens. So, we'll spin it this way. We'll give it a couple good whacks. See if it separates. Alrighty. Here's where things tend to get interesting. We might have to break out the big gun. We shall see. We shall see. See if we made any progress here. Yeah, we got a little bit. We moved it just a little bit, so we'll grab the air hammer and see if we can't hammer that thing out a little bit further. All right, so I'm gonna save you guys the majority of the hammering and just give you this last little bit here. There we go. Took the big gun. Get her out. All right. Here's what we're looking at, guys. So this bearing, if you can see it, is completely toast. Tons of movement. And there is the actual sensor, speed sensor. Now, this one doesn't look horrible, but what happens is this bolt right here will break off inside the hub. These things rust and swell around the sensor, and you won't be able to get the sensor off of here. So. If your sensor is bad, you have to replace the whole hub. Um, this one, we're replacing the whole hub anyway because the bearing is completely toast. So we'll go grab the new bearing and I will show you guys what the new bearing looks like and what we're going to do to prevent what we just had to do with the air hammer. All right, guys. So what I like to do is I like to use just a wire brush like this, a little cup brush. Um, I have one smaller, but I can't find it at the moment. It's MIA, but we use this brush. We'll get inside the hub here, right in this area. 
We'll clean that out, get as much of the rust out as we can. All right, so we got that pretty well cleaned out. We gotta straighten up this guy because we kind of we kind of dinked it a little bit. So let me go straighten that out. All right, so I don't know how much you guys saw before the battery <clears throat> in this camera went from 100% to zero and completely dead. But when we put it back together, basically just doing the exact opposite of what we did. We torqued on all three bolts for the wheel bearing, put the rotor back on, Put the caliper bracket back on, the two bolts behind those, torque those, caliper back on, torque that, and then we put wheel speed sensor wire in and good. Last thing we have to do is that little cap. We'll give it a tap and it'll be a wrap. That was really stupid and I'm sorry. But let's find a hammer because I can't find a hammer. The old brass punch here. There we go. That's back on. So we are good. So let's uh let's go ahead and conclude this one. So yeah, nothing that you guys can't do when it comes to a wheel bearing replacement in these. Now they can be a little bit tricky to get out. You can use some heat. Um, mostly I just use the air hammer, use a chisel, use a, a really tight wedge chisel, not one that's splayed out like this, but a really super tight wedged one. And you'll be able to get in and behind it and then it pops out pretty easy. But these bearings are, they're a little expensive. They're, you know, for a decent bearing that's not ultra crap Chinese made, you're probably at 150, 180 bucks for the bearing with the sensor. So all in all, not too bad. If it's something you guys wanna to try to do yourselves, by all means, you can definitely tackle it. The only thing you probably wouldn't have tool wise to do this job would be that 35 millimeter socket, but you can go down to Advance Auto or even Walmart and pick one up for next to nothing. So don't be afraid to attempt something like this on your own. It may seem like a big job, but it really, really isn't. And uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that. This is the new format that I was talking about. A little bit more in-depth on the repairs, a um, little bit more in-depth information on how to do specific things. We're gonna take you through that. The videos are gonna be a little bit longer, but I think it's some good information and I think you guys could probably learn a little something from it if you're looking for this. If you happen to stumble upon this video and it helped you, please click that subscribe button, click the little bell icon. We'll be doing a bunch more like this. We have tons and tons of stuff coming in and out on a daily basis that we are going to be filming. So 2019 is going to be an interesting year between the welding, the fabrication, and all of the general maintenance. You guys should have some, uh, some cool stuff coming. So again, thanks for watching. I hope this helped, and I'll see you guys on the next one.